In this video, we're checking out the Nova 3D Elfin, a MSLA resin 3D printer with some pretty neat features that actually set it apart from the competition. Let's get started. This resin 3D printer comes to me direct from Nova 3D, who I had never heard of before, but they've been very patient on this review, so big thanks to them for that. When they sent this machine to me, it was very new. Their manual wasn't even packaged or released or complete at the time, but they've since sent it through. But despite being an early unit, it's incredibly well put together. The Elfin stands out as the only machine of its kind I've seen in this class that is almost fully injection molded. The top cover, like the Elegoo Mars, is injection molded and lifts clear from the printer, but the machine's body, the resin vat, the build plate, and even the mount for it are all injection molded. Now, this is an interesting move because it gives Nova 3D more control over the precision of the parts compared to a sheet metal process, which has quite a bit of tolerances involved. And get this, it means that they've gone with a build plate design that never needs adjusting. Now, I say never needs adjusting, it might be better to say, well, you can't adjust it. Instead, Nova 3D adjusts the entire Z-axis assembly in factory using these mounting points, and the build plate is instead just rigidly fixed to the Z-axis through its mount held in place with a single locking wheel. This is great to help you get up and running quickly, and my first test with the demo print kind of worked, but revealed first layer adhesion was poor, it wasn't close enough. Thankfully though, you can calibrate that easily enough using the good old piece of paper trick, and we were good to go. Now talk about a showy demo model here. Look at this, it's like a tiny geodesic dome moon base. It's super cool. Print volume is typical, about 130 by 70 by 150 millimeters in the Z axis using the all too familiar 2K resolution LCD. And mechanical design is among the best I've seen with an actual linear rail and an Acme lead screw, not a ball screw. I wish there was a ball screw there, would have made it the best looking machine I've seen. But regardless, it makes for an incredibly rigid and precise Z axis movement. Nova 3D also provided their own resin for this review and I used that for all my testing. But I need to stress that the machine does not come with resin normally in the packaging. They sell it separately and you can buy it additionally, but the machine itself doesn't come with resin just like a lot of the others on the market. The resin is this somewhat nasty smelling green goop, but it was what was provided, so I use it for all my tests using the settings in their very own slicer, Nova Maker. Now, having used Chi2 Box a lot lately, I was a little disappointed to discover I couldn't spit out the CWS format this printer requires, not at least not yet in Chi2 Box but there are benefits to using their provided slicer. For a start, in addition to the USB and ethernet ports, this machine has wireless connectivity and it works really well. You connect it to your network through the color touch screen and then find it through their app. And it looks like it should be able to handle multiple machines at once for print control and monitoring, which could be pretty cool for a print farm. The machine also has a sizable internal storage, so once you transfer over Wi-Fi, you can just shut your computer down and let the machine go, or stay connected and remotely monitor progress. The software, for the most part, works pretty well. It doesn't have some usability improvements that Chi2 Box has, like the hollowing or 3D infill, but you can still hollow like in the good old days using Mesh Mixer, and supports work well enough though they do leave a bit of a mark compared to the more pointy Chi2 Box ones. And I'm also rather embarrassed to mention how long it took me to realize that this icon meant slice. I made a video discussing the safety of resin systems here, but a quick look at the enclosure after a few runs reveals just why this technology should be taken fairly seriously. It started to fog up, and not just a little, quite a lot. It's actually still kind of foggy here after I've cleaned it. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it's fogging up. I don't know if it's water moisture from the resin or it's something else more volatile from the resin. I don't know why, but regardless, that's definitely something to keep in mind and why I run these printers in a dedicated, well-ventilated area. But enough about safety. Now it's time to talk about the print quality of the Nova 3D Elfin. Now, I recorded this part after the main video because, well, there are a few developments. As you can see here, the print quality is absolutely phenomenal. These resin printers don't have any trouble resolving fine details, but something I did notice with the macro photos was the voxelization from that LCD screen was a lot more evident in these prints than the ones I was getting off the Elegoo Mars and Epax X1. And I believe there's a few factors to this. For a start, 
The Epax X1 and Elgu Mars I tested with any cubic skin colored resin. This is a very opaque resin and it's very different to the almost completely transparent green resin that Nova 3D provided, which I do believe shows these artifacts a lot more. But I am using different software, remember, I'm using Nova Maker. And I reached out to them and asked about the anti-aliasing built into that software. And they mentioned that yes, the Nova Maker software does have anti-aliasing enabled, and it's a sort of factor. So in my settings, I had it set to two. And I didn't really realize that this is something I might want to consider increasing to get a more anti-aliased image, which it says will take more time to slice, but in theory you get a smoother result. What I wanted to do is go back to the drawing board and print two tests with it completely disabled and one with it ramped up to 3.5. So this is where I, I did notice that I had actually a small leak in the bottom of the vat, the FEP tray and it's evident in these photos. Now it was a very tiny leak, very easy to clean up. So what I needed to do was change the FEP film. And it's really quite good that this happened because I realized that the provided replacement for the Nova 3D Elfin is an injection molded cover that holds the FEP taut that you screw into place. It's not like you need to fiddle with a piece of film and attach that like on regular metal vats. It's a lot easier to attach. Now this does mean you'll have to get your film from them if you want to use this tray because it's specially designed to slot in with these two little slotting knobs on the machine but that did make changing the film very easy indeed. Now I did have to change resin and I haven't been hugely happy with the cure times or the Anycubic skin resin. So I went with the Pio Poly Deft Gray resin, which I've been printing on the Pio Poly Phenom. Not to mention I found the resin provided was incredibly brittle. Where I'd break off supports, there would be little cracked craters as if it was made of rock candy. I'm not sure if I was over curing it or the resin's just like this, but either way, it's run out. So I'm gonna use the Deft resin. So I actually used these settings and ended up printing two Maker Coins, one with zero anti-aliasing and one with 3.5. And yes, you can very easily see the effect of anti-aliasing in these two prints. So I'm very happy with this result. So let's go back to the conclusion of this review. Overall, I think Nova 3D did a great job with the Elfin, but what about the hard question? How much does it cost? As most of you will know, the small form factor MSLA market is in an all out price war currently. And the Elfin is currently priced at $360 US. Which is interesting because it puts it somewhere between the lower price Elgu Mars and the Epax X1 with its sheet metal frame and low adhesion non-FEP film. For your money, you're getting a machine that's factory level, but you may need a slight Z height adjustment a sturdy Z-axis with a linear rail, as well as this mostly injection model design that must have cost them a small fortune to develop, but does mean part tolerance between machines will probably be quite high. And then add the Wi-Fi connectivity in, this machine feels to me best suited for a print farm where you might buy several of them and have them pumping out small precise prints on the daily, all controlled with one central computer versus having to hot swap USB sticks, uh, which is a bit of a pain. Personally, I'm not a fan of the completely removable top cover, similar to the Mars. I'd rather to have a hinged door like the X1 does. And if you're running off the USB, it's a little challenging to get. You know, it's, it's a little bit behind the side of the machine. Not too bad. But it's interesting to see that Nova 3D's older resin printer seems to have been an all-out clone of the Elegu Mars. It looks identical. I don't know which one came first. But I'm really happy to see them innovating like this with this machine that does actually stand alone in some of its features. And... For that, I'm pretty happy to recommend it. You can find purchase links to this machine in the video description and full disclosure, Nova 3D sent the Elfin 3D printer free of charge for purpose of review and all opinions are my own. If you're still on the fence with resin 3D printing because it's a really high detail technology, but it does have its drawbacks, I have my playlist here with my resin 3D printer primer, which you should definitely check out as well as all my other resin 3D printer reviews. So thanks for watching guys. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later. Bye.